After the ice, snow, blizzards and freezing fog of the last weeks, burst pipes are now plaguing the nation. As the thaw continues with temperatures throughout the country in the low 40s, the pipes that had burst while frozen have started to flow again with disastrous results. The Wales Water Authority say they have so many burst mains that unless people conserve water, the whole supply system will break down. Emergency services from Hull to Bristol are inundated with calls for help. It's the elderly, who don't know where to turn their mains water off, who've been worst hit. Centres have been set up across the country for those whose houses have become uninhabitable. The Severn Valley is again one of the most badly affected areas. Graham Purchase reports. Staff arriving for work at the Tudor Hotel in Tewkesbury today found the basement flooded to a depth of several feet. This was typical of thousands of incidents being reported to the fire brigade and the police as the continued thaw melted the ice in burst pipes and water poured into bedrooms, cellars and living rooms. Meanwhile, parts of the River Severn in Gloucestershire resembled the Arctic today as ice flows broke away from the banks and floated downriver. The Severn Trent Water Authority say the level of water is slightly higher than normal and if the rapid thaw continues, Riverside dwellers, who've only just recovered from the last floods on New Year's Eve, could find themselves inundated again later in the week. Much of that earlier flood water became frozen before it could drain away, but it's now melting with the snow and could have a dramatic effect on river levels. The thaw will also help to unfreeze the sporting fixtures list. One club's been unaffected, QPR with their new artificial turf. The sign said it all, although the game didn't live up to the pitch. Neither Barnet nor Leamington, both Alliance Premier League teams, scored. QPR have offered their all-weather pitch to any team that wants it, as long as they cover the stadium's expenses. Despite controversy over the new AstroTurf, this winter it's shown its advantages. Miners in England and Scotland have voted against taking strike action over their pay deal. Although the result won't be known officially until later this week, our Labour Relations correspondent says it's well short of the 55% majority needed to give the executive authority to call a strike. The South Wales pits don't vote until Tuesday, but our correspondent says the size of the vote against striking, at least 50%, means that whatever the outcome, it's unlikely to tip the balance. Britain's rail services are again at a standstill for the second time in less than a week. ASLEF, the train drivers' union, called today's stoppage and plan another two-day strike for Wednesday and Thursday. But British Rail say they should be able to run a reasonable service tomorrow. Some behind-the-scenes efforts are being made to get the two sides talking again. At all the big London stations today, it was the same story. They were mostly deserted, with mailbags piled up on the platforms waiting for the strike to end at midnight. In comparison, however, Victoria Coach Station was busy. People who had to travel today made full use of the service. Extra coaches were laid on to take passengers to Gatwick Airport. Normally, they can travel by rail from Victoria. The leader of the Polish Free Trade Union, Solidarity, is soon to be set free, according to the Polish ambassador here. Lech Wałęsa has been held under house arrest since the military takeover more than a month ago. Today's news that he's to be freed came from the Polish ambassador in London, who was at Heathrow Airport this morning to meet his wife. Mr. Stanisztewski told reporters he'd had good news about Lech Wałęsa from Warsaw, that he was to be released in the very near future. Five men died and two others are missing after an accident on the Moselle River in eastern France. Their barge collided with a pipeline which carried carbon monoxide gas across the river to a power station near Thionville. Although it only took half an hour to plug the leak, 27 rescuers were also overcome by gas. The people of Deptford in South London have been remembering the 13 young people who died a year ago when fire swept through a house during a party for black teenagers. Although many black people suspected the blaze had been started by a firebomb, a three-and-a-half-week inquest returned an open verdict. Reporter Mike Mackay was at today's Much service. Much of the black community in Deptford has never accepted the open verdict of the inquest into last year's fire. So today's service at St. Paul's Church in Deptford wasn't simply to remember the dead, but to demonstrate that the campaign to discover the truth goes on. 
Mrs. Emza Ruddock, who lost two children in the fire, one of whom was celebrating her 16th birthday, read out a roll call of the 13 youngsters who died. Among the crowded congregation of nearly 800, the Labour MP, Mr. John Silkin, who sat close to officers representing the local police. Still strongly suspecting an arson attack, the Deptford Action Committee have appealed against the inquest verdict and plan to set up their own commission of inquiry. A draw in the fifth test seems almost a certainty now after England batted throughout the fourth day against India at Madras. David Cass was there. It looked like being the bowler's day when Shastri trapped Graham Gooch in only the fifth over. He scored 127. Doshi bowled superbly and England's captain Keith Fletcher was clean bowled for only three. Chris Tavery got into the record books. His 35 runs took a little over six hours to score. Doshi put an end to the tedium just after lunch. In two hours, Tavery had added only nine to his overnight score. At the close, in reply to India's 481 for four declared, England reached 307 for six. Gower made 64 and Botham 52. The final crunch came this afternoon for a forest of tall chimneys that have dominated the Bedfordshire landscape since 1930. Each 140 feet high, the 23 chimneys have become surplus to the requirements of the London Brick Company. A drastic way to stop smoking, perhaps, but the rubble will go to reinforce the banks of a lake in a local environmental project. That's all for now. Our next news is at 10.30. Good evening to you. It seems as if we just can't win with this weather of ours. We're getting rid of the ice and snow, all right, although, as you've just seen on the news, even that is causing problems. But in its place, we have yet another weather hazard, and that's fog. And with these gentle southerly winds persisting, we're going to have fog with us for the next few days. We have frontal systems too, but they're not going to really do much to help the fog. They'll just bring a bit of rain into some western and northern parts. But let's look at tonight. First of all, and as you see straight away, fog, the main theme, a good deal of fog to be expected over much of England and Wales and the southeastern corner of Scotland during the course of the night. A little bit more breeze though in the far west with mist and drizzle rather than fog. And over Scotland and Northern Ireland, the cloud thickening all the time and rain coming into Northern Ireland this evening and some other western parts of Scotland during the course of the night and they'll stay that way tomorrow cloudy with further rain from time to time but elsewhere the day starting off very misty with a good deal of fog around it'll thin away slowly in most places to give some bright intervals or even a little bit of hazy sunshine but here and there I think the fog will stick especially in the Midlands and the north of England and where it does it'll give uh, a fairly cold day with it <laughs> 